Would you like to learn about software defined wide area networks, otherwise known as SD WAN? If so, this video is for you. My name is Michael Gibbs, and I'm the founder and CEO of GoConquerors, but I've also been a network architect now for over 25 years. And when there's networking technology that's really cool, I still love to talk about it. And today we're gonna to talk about SD-WAN, otherwise known as software-defined wide area networks. And it may sound complicated, but we'll break it down for you. If you are a cloud architect or a solutions architect, chances are you need to know about SD-WAN because you're gonna be using it to connect your customer to the cloud. And if you are a network engineer, this is absolutely critical information as well. So a wide area network is just about connecting two distant locations and traditionally, we have two options. We have a traditional private line where you basically buy the equivalent of a wire between location A and location B, or we typically tunnel through the internet and use the internet for our routing and put an IPsec tunnel on it. But the problem is with the internet, performance is not guaranteed and latency is not guaranteed and packet loss isn't guaranteed. So basically we have no guarantees of our network on the internet. And when we need great performance, we typically need private lines, but they get expensive. And this is one of the ways where software-defined networking or SD-WAN can help. Additionally, SD-WAN can be much simpler to manage and it can reduce the network complexity. And it can bring in our networks, whether they're coming in via 5G, whether it's a private line, an MPLS network, and getting our systems talking together in a smooth and an efficient manner. So let's talk about how SD-WAN actually works. Normally, our routers connect to each other and they run a routing protocol to learn how to forward the systems. And that routing protocol is called the control plane. And they also have the data plane or the forwarding plane because those routers actually forward the packets from point A to point B until they reach their destination. But SD-WAN is a little different. The key lies in the SD-WAN architecture, which is going to separate the control plane, the management plane, and the data plane. And we'll explain all of them for you to make it real easy. In an SD-WAN environment, we're going to have a centralized controller that's going to be responsible for managing the network. The controller acts like a satellite in the sky that can kind of see everything. And it's kind of the brain of the network. Now, this controller actually makes intelligent decisions on how the traffic should flow. And by taking the controller off of the router, with a pie in the sky controller can look at areas of congestion and areas of speed and reroute traffic to its best performance to get to this destination. And with SD-WAN, it actually incorporates the control plane. Basically, the SD-WAN controller is communicating to those routers so they know send the traffic out this interface versus this interface, which may be independent of the routing protocols on the router. The controller will provide routing, security, and other policies to edge devices, ensuring consistent and efficient network operation. Now, we also have the management plane. And the management plane is kind of like the network's you know, mission control center. It's where the IT team can quickly and simply configure and monitor the network from a single user-friendly interface, as opposed to going all other routers and configuring them manually at the command line. And this controller really simplifies network management and it allows for a more agile and responsive network configurations. Now, in some cases, there's going to be an additional layer called the orchestration plane, which really acts as a network automation engine, if you will. And that will help automate and coordinate various network functions, kind of the way an, or an, an orchestra conductor will can ensure that all the instruments work together and play together harmoniously. And when present, the orchestration plane is often integrated with the management plane appliance. So now we've talked about the three planes, the control plane, the management plane, and the orchestration, and they're gonna to work together to ensure that SD-WAN is running smoothly and efficiently without the need for manual intervention at every device or location. So now we're gonna have the edge devices where, you know, at the edge of the network operating in the data plane, and they're gonna be like the network's workhorses. They're gonna handle the actual forwarding of network traffic based upon the policies that are set forward by the controller. One of the core principles of software-defined WANs is the creation of, say, an overlay network on top of existing transport networks. 
whether it's broadband internet, MPLS, or a, or a cellular system or a cellular type network. An overlay network is really just a virtual network built on top of existing physical networks, allowing businesses to create a single unified network that can be easily managed and optimized regardless of the underlying physical infrastructure. Now the overlay network is going to enable SD-WAN to be transport independent, meaning the business is not going to be limited to just one way of connecting locations like we traditionally have with traditional, say, private lines. In the case of SD-WAN, it's about giving businesses the freedom to pick and choose whatever connectivity methods they want, whichever the most effective or economical, without being stuck in a one-size-fits-all configuration like we traditionally would deal with, and it's going to make it much more agile to their changing needs. Now, with SD-WAN, we can have an active-active design where all network paths are used simultaneously, ensuring and enhancing traffic flows and robustness. And it's a departure from a traditional, say, active standby environment where the second connections lie dormant until needed. And by engaging all connections, SD-WAN is going to boost network performance and reliability while keeping the business connected in pretty much every situation. The SD-WAN edge devices and the central controller are going to work together to monitor the network's performance. And the edge devices will use protocols to transmit information about the network connections, such as speed, latency, and packet loss back to the central controller. And then that controller can either proactively push policies to the edge devices on how to handle specific situations or make real-time decisions when performance thresholds are breached. SD-WAN will also simplify the process of connecting to cloud services and applications by enabling direct, secure connections to the cloud providers through, through SD-WAN. And this is going to reduce the need for backhauling traffic through the data center, which can increase latency and, of course, degrade performance. Basically, what we're talking about here is the decoupling of the control plane, the management plane, and the data plane by leveraging a centralized controller and creating an overlay ne network will enable SD-WAN to provide a more agile, reliable, and cost-effective approach to troubleshooting, which is going to keep the business and it's consistently changing with the demands of cloud-centric environments or mobile workforces. So let's talk about the business benefits of SD-WAN. In the past, we had to connect our offices together with very expensive private lines. And these lines were expensive, and if we needed one, it could take weeks or months to set up. And if we needed to change locations, it was a time-consuming and complex process. But not so with SD-WAN. Another issue with traditional networks is the hardware. Companies need to buy some very expensive routers, some firewalls, and relatively expensive switches. And upgrading and maintaining a traditional network was a constant drain on IT budgets, and it was a very hardware-centric solution. As businesses began to rely more on cloud-based services and cloud-based applications, traditional networks really struggled to keep up. And employees really needed to access the applications and their data from anywhere, not just being in the office. And this shift in traffic patterns put a strain on networks that were designed primarily for connecting offices to each other, rather than connecting, say, to the internet or just the cloud services. Now here's the key. The result of it was actually poor application performance, maybe slow load times of the application, choppy video calls, and this obviously is not good for employees or employee productivity. And SD-WAN really solves that by giving us a very performance-oriented network at a much lower cost. So now you know what is SD-WAN, how does SD work, and the business benefits of SD-WAN. I'd like to invite you to one of our free webinars. If you're looking to become a cloud architect or an enterprise architect or an artificial intelligence architect, we have free webinars and free ebooks to help you with your career goals. You can find those free resources in the description of this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to help you with your networking, your cloud computing, your enterprise architect, or your AI architect career. This is Michael Gibbs signing now, signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you in a new video or another webinar. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon.